Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're gonna be talking about test pollution and I'm gonna show you how I debugged a problem at work. Uh, I've actually done a video on test pollution before, so I will link that in the description. And we're gonna be using a tool that I wrote to make debugging this very, very easy. Uh, but anyway, let us jump into that real quick. Okay, so uh, I'm on a very old, or a couple of weeks old version of Sentry because I have already fixed this bug, uh, but I wanted to walk you through just how I went about fixing it. Uh, I found a test that when run by itself, it fails, this particular Slack test here. And if we run that real quickly, uh, we'll see that we get that it fails here. Uh, the failure is kind of hard to read here, but uh, I will just let you know that the difference is there's a name field in here that's sometimes present. Uh, the interesting thing is if I run this entire module, uh, this test passes. So there's something in this module that is causing the test to, to fail or causing it to pass, I guess, technically. Uh, the pollution is kind of the reverse of the classic case. Usually the classic case is two tests happen and the second one fails. In this case, the test always fails unless it is run with something else that enables it to pass. So since this is, a, since this is kind of the opposite case of the usual one, we're actually going to adjust the test so it passes by itself and figure out when it fails with the other test. Um, I have planned to add an option to my uh, test detection tool to sort of do this inverse case automatically, but for now, uh, it's easier to just do it like this. Test, task, existing rule, uh, lowercase e. Uh, cool, so the problem is this name field is sometimes propagated, so I'm gonna copy that down here. Uh, and so now we should have the test passing on its own. If we run this, we'll see that the test is passing. This is kind of the classic case. So now, now it is back in the normal case where it normally passes by itself, but it fails with the group. Great, okay, so now what we can do is we can use the detect test pollution tool, uh, pass it the entire list of tests, which is this file here, and then our failing test, which is, I have it off screen so I can paste it. Uh, and so now what this tool is going to do is it's going to bisect down the test list to find a pair of tests that are causing this failure. Um, sometimes it's unsuccessful at this, like sometimes it's three tests, or I actually ran into a case recently where it was 700 tests. Uh, I might make a video about that because it was kind of, kind of interesting and one of the weirdest cases that I've seen for this. Uh, oh, there's standard error stuff here. I guess we can ignore that. Uh, and so now it should bisect this down, about four steps remain, so it shouldn't take too long for it to uh, figure out the test. Basically what it's doing is it's dividing the test suite in half, figuring out if it still fails here. If not, it's probably this chunk of tests, and then splits the test down until it can narrow it down to exactly two tests, and then it'll tell us what two tests are polluting. But that still doesn't help us solve the problem of why they are polluting. And in this case, it was very not obvious to me. Uh, so we, we now have a failing single failing test here. So we can run highest test this and our other test ID. And it should fail, uh, whereas we showed that it did pass on its own. Let's see here, the first test should pass, second test should fail. Yep, cool. So now we have our failure mode and we can debug what is happening here. Now, when I looked at this, I noticed one sort of thing about this, which is that, uh, see that we, we noticed that that name field was just kind of disappearing. Uh, I actually debugged this a lot, and up until the part where it saves it in the database, this name field was still there. So it looked like it was working, and even if I like selected the item right after inserting it, it was still there as well. Um, but it wasn't until this assertion ran down here where it started failing. Test task existing rule. So I use kind of a cool technique to figure out, uh, hey, why is this, where is this name field getting deleted from? Uh, I made a special class that uh, I used to spy on this dictionary. I called it WTF dict because I was just, <laughs> I was very confused about what was happening. And so it was easier for me to just name it whatever I wanted. Uh, I knew that a key was being deleted. So I overrode the del method for, uh, dictionaries and slapped a breakpoint in here uh, and then um, we're in super dot del. Uh, so it just defaults to the normal behavior. So I was trying to spy on this delete method, set a breakpoint so I could figure out where it was happening and figure out why it was happening here. Go back to uh, test task existing rule. I'm going to spy on this dictionary here by wrapping it in my WTF dictionary. 
so this should hopefully tell me when this name field gets deleted, uh, whereas before it was not getting deleted. Go ahead and rerun this test again, or at least this pair of tests. And so now this should tell us where it gets deleted and should drop me into a debugger right at that line. Oh, it did not. Did I edit the wrong test? Uh... Oh, it's not Dell, it's Dell item. Right. We're deleting an item in a dictionary. <laughs> Dell is the destructor that well, isn't really a destructor. I am surprised the destructor didn't get called here. All right, cool. Well, this super call is wrong, but that's fine anyway. Uh, and so now we've dropped into a breakpoint and we can see where this is happening. And we see from this that it's actually in this API endpoints project rules file, which has nothing to do with the test at all in this case. Uh, this was a module that got imported as a side effect of the other test. If we look inside that test or inside that function, uh, it is line 29, 29. Uh, we'll see that we get this clean rule data function, and that is a signal receiver. Now, signal receivers in Django are uh, kind of the definition of action at a distance. They are things that you can register that respond to events in Django. It's one of the things that I hate about Django because it's very, very hard to debug them, and they result in all sorts of weird bugs if they are not imported in a common path. Uh, this is imported in just sort of an API endpoints file, so it's not even it's not even closely related to the class that we're testing, uh, and so this rule or this signal only gets registered some of the time, and so that ended up being the bug. Uh, the fix was well, there's two fixes here. One is to move this into a common place because it should really happen any time that rule is saved, not just in this particular API endpoint. Uh, or the easier fix was to just change the tests to not have a name field. Uh, that's the intention of the sentry code going forward anyway, is to delete all these names. Uh, I ended up opting for the second one because it's a little bit easier. I didn't really understand what was going on here, so it's easier for me to just say, oh, I'll just fix the tests. Pretty hard to break prod if you only change tests. Uh, but anyway, that was how I used some tools to debug this problem and fix a, a real test failure uh, using both my detect test pollution tool as well as a little, a little fun trick to figure out how a dictionary got modified. Hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.